वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स लेट मी डिस्कस योर डर्माटोलॉजी क्वेश्चन ने आप लेट्स लुक एट द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन द क्वेश्चन इज पिक द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट इन पेम्फिक इज द इंटरसेलर सीमेंट सब्सटेंस इज अफेक्टेड सेकेंड एक्जीमा इंटरसेलर एडीमा बोलेस पेम्फिक और हेमी डेजमोजोमा डैमेज एंड डेजमोजोम्स आर इंटैक्ट एंड इन ई बी एस एस डैमेज टू कॉलेज लेट्स लुक एट द सेंटेंसेज ना इन पेम्फिक the intercellular cement is affected is wrong now this is the keratinocyte this is the keratinocyte and this is the intercellular substance in between this intercellular substance is affected in the disease eczema okay so this would have been eczema as the correct answer so this is wrong pemphiga the intercellular cement is not affected okay in pemphiga the desmosomes are affected desmosomes are affected this is basically the main pathology in pemphigus in eczema second uh, option intracellular edema no this is intercellular edema not intracellular edema so that intercellular edema would have been the correct option so this is again wrong in bullus pemphigus hemi desmosome is damaged and desmosomes are intact now, this appears to be the correct option now in bullus pemphigus see what happens now, if this is the dermoepidermal junction okay this is the basal keratinocyte now this is called the hemi desmosome and hemi desmosomes are completely destroyed in the disease bullus pemphigoid and desmosome is the structure which connects the keratinocytes between each other and this is intact in patients of bullus pemphigoid okay so in bullus pemphigoid the hemi desmosome are gone and the desmosome are intact and in pemphigus it is the other way around in pemphigus the desmosome is gone and the hemi desmosome is okay All right. Now, first of fourth option in EBS, no, there's damage to collagen. Now, in EBS, the damage is to keratin. The keratin is absent basically in EBS. Okay, the collagen is the problem in the disease EBD. Epidermolysis bullosa dystrophica. So here, the correct option would be the third option, bullous pemphigoid. Now, next question: A twelve-year-old boy had a gradually progressive plaque on the buttock for three years. Now, when you say progressive, progression is a very classical word, which is associated with the disease lupus vulgaris. Buttock also would support the same situation. Now, it is got scarring in the center. Remember that if there is central scarring, you think of lupus vulgaris. If there is central crusting, you think of something which is leishmaniasis. If there is only crusting and no scarring, and there'll usually be a crust, okay, here, and there'll be some bite by a sand fly. That some kind of a history like that. Also, maybe a history of Bihar, UP, those endemic areas for leishmaniasis. Okay, maybe there'll be a bit of fever also mentioned sometimes. Now, if there is central clearing. mentioned that will be tinea so in this three words are typically suggestive progressive we have seen buttocks we have seen and scarring we have seen so that would be lupus vulgaris now leprosy is not like a buttock thing only that would not really be there now scarring is not a feature of leprosy you would get more of atrophy so in leprosy you would get atrophy not really scarring so much and you would have some like loss of sensation tinea corporis i told you will be clearing in the center and there will be some itch also which will be noticed granulum annulare is a granulomatous condition which is again annular granulomatous papules there will be some papules like this in a annular form so annular form annular is there in granulum annulare because that is what is called granulum annulare and on biopsy you get a granuloma so that's why the name is justified okay and this granuloma is called a palisading granuloma meaning there is a granuloma on biopsy on the edges edges has granuloma center there is a bit of mucin on biopsy and that is the biopsy finding clinically it will be annular with papules on the edge that's the clinical thing all right many times granuloma alloy will have some association with diabetes and typically it will be seen on the dorsa of the hand and that is where it really mostly comes or the feet even okay so that is the situation for granuloma and so answer on this would be the cutaneous tuberculosis which is lupus vulgaris now syndromic approach 
when we talk about syndromic approaches now syndromic approach is an approach where basically you have two diseases or other two etiologies getting treated together for urethral discharge there are gonococcal and non gonococcal urethritis situations you have to treat both and for that the classical option is azithro 1 gram stat and cefixim 400 mg stat so two stat doses taken together in the gray packet is typically the urethral discharge syndromic packet very easy question to answer on this a 28 year old female has flaccid bulla in the skin and oral erosions histopathology the image is as shown now in this you can see the histopathology there are this is stratum corneum stratum granulosum and stratum basale this sorry not stratum basale stratum spinosum and this bottom is stratum basale okay and this is a gap in between that is the blister cavity okay that is a blister cavity filled with acantholytic cells and this basal layer is a single layer which is got separated from the other layers and this will be called as row of tombstone appearance row of tombstones appearance and that is a classical feature of pemphigus vulgaris and it will typically have flaccid bullae in the skin and oral ulcers so it is skin and oral ulcers both together will be a very classical mucocutaneous pemphigus vulgaris and this histopathology is a classical row of tombstones Fifth, regarding the difference between adult atopic and seborrheic dermatitis, adult atopic dermatitis has more answer is lichenification. Now, what is lichenification? Now, whenever a lesion is chronic and when you rub it a lot, when you typically rub the lesions, you then get lichenification. So, lichenification is a phenomenon which happens if you rub too much. Lichenification is a triad of three things. The patient starts getting a bit of blackness on the skin. They get basically thickness of that area and increase skin markings. So this is a triad of lichenification, very thick skin, some darkness coming in and increased skin markings. And this lichenification typically happens if you rub something too much. And that's a classical feature of chronic atopic dermatitis. If it's chronic, usually acute atopic dermatitis has oozing chronic will have lichenification. Now, greasy scales is typically for seborrheic dermatitis. Yellow plaques, again seborrheic and facial involvement is again seborrheic dermatitis. Now, face is involved in atopic dermatitis also, but only in children. Okay, not in adult. So, if you see, this is adult. Okay, so adult atopic dermatitis, no involvement of the face. It's mainly in adult. You would get atopic dermatitis typically on the flexural surfaces, on the flexural surfaces so that is not the answer so lichenification would be the best option on this which of the following is not seen in Bessette's disease now Bessette's basically is a neutrophilic dermatosis okay which has many features very typically it has oral ulcers and it has genital ulcers and both these are basically in the form of aphthous ulcers so these are basically aphthous Aphthous are basically round ulcers with a bit of red margin. So these are usually red margins on the, on the edges and quite ulcerative in the center. And these ulcers are quite painful as well. So painful ulcers and they are also recurrent. So they, the patient will keep on getting it again and again and again. All right. So this is correct. This is correct. Now thrombophobitis is also a feature of Bessette's recurrent in fact thrombophobitis. Now, erythema induratum is the answer on this because erythema induratum is a type of nodular tuberculid. It's a type of nodular tuberculid. Okay. So that is obviously no feature, no reason, no association with Bessette's. In fact, Bessette's has one erythema called as erythema nodosum. So they have erythema nodosum, meaning they have on the shin some red nodules. So that is typically how erythema nodosum, painful nodules on the shin. So that if it would have been there, it would have been the correct option. But this, that is obviously not there. Pseudo isomorphic phenomenon seen in what? Now pseudo means false. Isomorphic, also called as pseudo kibnos phenomenon. So what is kibnos? When you have one lesion of what and you scratch and you give linear trauma, you have new lesions coming in the scratch line. And that is typically seen in watch.
Now, psoriasis, vitiligo, DLE, these also have kibners, but we call them true kibners because these are autoimmune diseases. True kibners, but in warts, which is viruses, viral infections, you would have pseudo kibners. Eight, which of the following statement is incorrect about bullous pemphigus? Seen in elderly, it is correct. Flaccid blister, it is wrong. So that would be the answer because there would be tense blisters here. And auto antibodies against hemidesbosome, correct. Pruritus, correct. So answer here would typically be tense blisters would be seen, not flaccid.